A quick guide to getting lucky. My experience with volunteer photography by Jack Quinn. Okay, so being fairly Irish, it might not be a surprise that the biggest thing I got out of this grad project was how to get lucky. Before I tell you how I learned that, I'm going to begin with some of the luck that I already started with. I am extremely fortunate to not only have grown up in the diverse and cultured community that is the Wissahickon School District, but also in that I've been able to find lifelong friends here as well. One of these friends is Ishan. Ishan is my guy and his family comes from India. This year, his family hosted a Diwali party. I don't know if you've ever been to a Diwali party, but my experience was a wonderful blend of conversation, fireworks, and more chicken tikka masala than I could ever hope to eat. Diwali is the festival of lights, so of course there are sparklers. Seeing everything with the eyes of a photographer, I immediately recognized the potential of the situation. I grabbed the camera, set the exposure for 15 seconds, adjusted the lighting, and assigned each person a letter. After several failed attempts, where someone would inevitably draw their letter backwards, we finally got the picture we were hoping for. Pretty cool. When we went back inside to join the rest of the party, something crazy happened. As chance would have it, a lady at the party was searching for an event photographer. When she saw a teenage boy trying to organize a group photo while yelling at his friends to relearn the alphabet, I guess she thought that she had found her guy. She asked me if I was interested in taking photos for a cooking class she was hosting at her house, and knowing that I needed to get grad project hours in somehow, I immediately agreed to do it. The next day, I showed up to her house at 4 and took photos until 8. Along with getting free and delicious food and socializing with the moms of Spring House, I was able to practice my skills while helping out the community simultaneously. My photos are now on our website, and in the end, I was lucky to have had such an experience. I got lucky. It may be pure chance that I got a gig at a Diwali party of all places, but as I've worked my way through this project, I've begun to realize more and more that luck is actually a result of my own actions. It was the Roman philosopher Seneca that said, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. It's the idea that fortune is not completely up to chance and reminds us that we make our own luck. Looking back at this project, I've realized that my own preparation, or lack thereof, is what determined the quality of my photographs. I didn't know what to expect when Yushin handed me a curta and told me to show up at 6. But I came ready and not only had a good time with old friends, but was also lucky enough to establish a continuing professional relationship with a new client. So the big question is, why photography? If you wanted to make my elementary school teachers laugh, all you would need to tell them is that I was going to become an artist one day. While my illustration abilities stop at Hangman, over the years I have gravitated towards photography as an outlet for creative expression. In ninth grade, my parents got me a new high-end camera on the pretense that I would take photos at future family events. It soon became my primary hobby. However, Photography quickly grew from something fun to do with friends to an actual service that I could provide for the community. I was an event photographer for our school's mini-thon last year, and this was the first time that I realized that I could really help the community with something I had always looked at as a simple pastime. When deciding what to do for my grad project, photography was the obvious choice. It helped the community, I enjoyed doing it, and I already wasn't getting paid for anything, so 40 volunteer hours didn't seem too bad. Before I began taking photos for people, I was going to need a logo. A logo is kind of what gets you into the photography community. It shows that you're a legit photographer and not just some random kid with a smartphone. I never thought that I would get excited about fonts, but after browsing the web for hours, I was elated to find some stylistic typefaces that I could use in a design. My creative process was all over the place. It would go from long design sessions in Adobe Illustrator to doodling in between the margins of my physics notes. Eventually, I settled on three final designs, and out of those I picked the winner. Coming to the game with a good logo was a necessary preparation that I'm glad I invested time in. The next step was actually taking photos. After the Diwali lady, I went up to the University of Pittsburgh to visit some friends. As we were walking back to their dorm, I got an idea. Around this time, I was wanting to try something new in my photos that would set me apart from a traditional photographer. Not only would this be more fulfilling for me, but it would also show clients that I could do more than just click a button. Usually innovation in photography means spending lots of money on new lenses or fancy tripods, but because this was a volunteer project, I didn't exactly have the funds for that. 
I was going to need some creativity to up my photo game, but thankfully, inspiration struck on that walk back to the dorm. To an onlooker, I probably looked quite stupid. Holding a phone in my outstretched hand and a camera in the other, I wouldn't blame you for being confused. Thankfully, I didn't embarrass myself for nothing. I took a normal photo of the Cathedral of Learning, one with a phone in the frame, and combined the two using a little bit of Photoshop magic. I wasn't the only one impressed with my work because a few days later, the official Pitt Instagram account reposted the photo. Being prepared with my camera and having the opportunity to take a photo from the perfect angle and with the perfect lighting was able to produce just enough luck for my work to be seen by thousands of people. This is where I began to expand beyond plane photography and into the realm of graphic design. When I was asked to design the pamphlet for our annual commencement ceremony, I jumped at the chance even before I knew what I was getting myself into. See, even though I had taken three full semesters of graphic design, I had never paid much attention and only focused on things I wanted to learn. Well, that came back to bite me in the butt because unfamiliarity with certain graphic software made my job much more difficult than it had to be. I was unprepared and thus unable to make the most of the opportunity. However, painful though it was, I grinded through the task and emerged as a learned man with a pretty decent looking pamphlet. As senior year carried on, I continued to fulfill the 40 hour service requirement. I took photos for friends and made a collage for my brother's wrestling team, among other things. And now here I am at the end of the road. The 40 hours may have been completed, but I hope that my passion for photography is far from over. However, what I've gotten out of this experience is so much more than taking photos. I've learned that luck is not completely out of my control. My fortunes are what I make of them. The best advice I can give is to stay on your toes because you never know the kind of chances you're going to get. For me, I'm excited for my future even if I don't know exactly what it holds. I'm coming out of this grad project with more experience, more preparation than I ever could ask for. Now, I just need the opportunities to present themselves and maybe, just maybe, I'll get lucky. Thank you.